Good evening and welcome to our service of Compline on this Friday, May 15th, TGIF. I am David Lehman, Bishop of Caledonia, Diocese of Northern British Columbia, and I am on the traditional unceded territory of the Shimshan people here in Terrace. Our worship this evening comes from the Book of Common Prayer, which you can find in the links for the service, and we begin on page 722. As we are in God's presence, and after what has been a full day and a full week and a full while uh, in this season of COVID, we come now just to offer ourselves to God and to seek his peace. So I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds as we come now into a time of worship. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm for this evening is Psalm 4, found on page 333. Psalm 4, page 333. And we shall say the psalm together. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness, Thou hast set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy upon me and hearken unto my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye blaspheme mine honour, and have such pleasure in vanity, and seek after falsehood? Know this also, that the Lord hath chosen to himself the man that is godly. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart and in your chamber, and be still. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness, and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart, more than men have when their grain and wine increase. I will lay me down in peace and take my rest, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest me dwell in safety. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our reading this evening is the 27th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. When it was decided that we were to sail for Italy, they transferred Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. Embarking on a ship of Adamantium that was about to set sail to the ports along the coast of Asia, we put to sea, accompanied by our, 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 our Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, the next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly, and allowed him to go to his friends to be cared for. Putting out to sea from there, we sailed under the lee of Cyprus, because the winds were against us. After we had sailed across the sea that was off Sicilia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra and Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship bound for Italy and put us on board. We sailed slowly for a number of days, and arrived with difficulty off Kindus. And as the wind was against us, we sailed under the lee of Crete off Salome. Sailing past it with difficulty, we came to a place called Far Havens, near the city of Lycia. Since much time had been lost and sailing was now dangerous, because even the fast had already gone by, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, 
I can see that this voyage will be in danger and much heavy loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. Since the harbor was not suitable for spending the winter, the majority was in favor of putting to sea from there on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, where they could spend the winter. It was a harbor of Crete, facing southwest and northwest. When a moderate south wind began to blow, they thought they could achieve their purpose. So they weighed anchor and began to sail past Crete, close to the shore. But soon a violent wind, called a northeaster, rushed down from Crete. Since the ship was caught and could not be turned head-on into the wind, they gave way to it and were driven. By running under the lee of a small island named Kata, they were scarcely able to get the ship's boat under control. After hoisting it up, they took measures to undergird the ship. Then, fearing that they would run onto Cetrus, they lowered the sea anchor, so they were driven. They were being pounded by the storm so violently that on the next day they began to throw cargo overboard. And on the third day, with their own hands, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest raged, all hope of, be, of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul then stood among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and have not set sail from Crete and thereby avoided this damage and loss. I urge you now to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For last night there stood by me an angel of God, to whom I belong and to whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before the emperor, indeed, God has granted safety to all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God, that it will be exactly as he, I have been told. But we will have to run aground on some island. When the fourteenth night had come, as they were adrift across the Sea of Ad uh, Adria, about midnight the sailors suspected that they were about nearing land. So they took soundings and found twenty fathoms, a little farther, they took soundings again and found fifteen fathoms. Fearing that we might run on the rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. But when the sailors tried to escape the ship and had lowered the boat into the sea on the pretext of putting it out uh, anchors from the bow, Paul said to the centurions and soldiers, Unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes from the boat and set it adrift. Just before daybreak, Paul urged all of them to take some food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day that you have been in suspense and remaining without food, having eaten nothing. Therefore I urge you to take some food, for it will help you survive. For none of you will lose a hair from your heads. After he had said this, he took bread, and giving thanks in the presence of all, he broke it, and began to eat. Then all of them were encouraged and took food for themselves. There were all there were in all two hundred and seventy six persons in the ship, and after they had been satisfied, they lightened the ship by throwing the wheat into the sea. In the morning they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach, on which they planned to run the ship ashore if they could. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea. At the same time, they loosed the ropes that tied the steering oars, and they hoisted the foresail to the wind, and they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the ship aground. The bow struck and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners so that none might swim away and escape. But the centurion wished to save Paul and kept them from carrying out their plan. 
He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make for land, and the rest to follow, some on planks and other pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to land. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our worship continues on page 723. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. We say together the Te Luctus Ante Terminum. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray, that with thy wonted favour thou wouldst be our guard and keeper now. From all ill dreams defend our eyes, from nightly fears and fantasize, tread underfoot our ghostly foe, that no pollution we may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost in thee doth live and reign eternally. Amen. Keep us as the apple of an eye, hide us under the shadow of thy wings. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We say together the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our ancestors, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. On the page, top of page 726, we pray, uh, we confess our sins as we pray together. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. The Collect for this week. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, so that among the sundry and manifold changes of this world, our hearts may be surely fixed, there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Visit, we beseech you, Lord, this place, and drive from it all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell herein to preserve us in peace. And may thy blessing be upon us evermore. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who at this evening hour didst rest in the sepulchre, and didst thereby sanctify the grave to be a bed of hope to thy people, make us so to abound in sorrow for our sins, which were the cause of thy passion, that when our bodies lie in the dust, our souls may live with thee, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chance of this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you, either aloud, in the comments box, or in the silence of your heart, to lay before God those people and things that are on your hearts this night, those things that you wish God to tend to as you take your rest and sleep this night. We pray as we do every night for those who are suffering from the COVID virus, for those that we may have heard of or know of, for those who are in refugee camps, in hospitals around the world, in long-term care facilities and in prisons. And we pray for those who care for them, doctors, nurses, respiratory technicians, all the people who work in health care that are trying to save as many people as they can at this time. We pray for researchers and for the hope of a vaccine. We pray for those who are also undergoing medical care for other things. That they may be kept safe and protected and, and that they only have to deal with the one thing, even though the, their anxieties are raised uh, at this time because of the added stress of this pandemic. We pray for all those who are tested at this time, for parents and students at home, for students who'd be starting to think about looking for jobs and, and worrying about finances for the fall term, for those who have summer businesses and, and uh, and and what tourism will look like this summer. We pray for all those who are preparing to reopen businesses, that they may do so with utmost care and compassion. We pray for all of us returning into um, into the world in many ways, that we do so with much care and compassion. 
that as people are figuring all this out for the first time ever, there will be some glorious mistakes and that we are called to have as much mercy as we can muster. We pray for our leaders in government, in industry, and in the church, that they may have wisdom and understanding and a clear vision from God of the future. We pray for our families and friends, for those preparing to go out this weekend, for those who will forget that we are still called to physically distance and to tend to to some new ways of living as we all desperately want to get back the way things were. Help them to restrain themselves. Help us to have compassion and remind ourselves to abide by the rules. For these and for those things that you have listed in uh, the in the in the comments boxes and in your hearts and, and aloud, let us come to God now. Be mindful, Lord, of thy people gathered before thee. Care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, collect the scattered, and bring the wandering to thy fold. Travel with the voyagers, defend the widows, shield the orphans, deliver the captives, heal the sick. Succor all who are in tribulation, necessity, anxiety, or distress. Remember for good all those that love us and those that hate us, and those that have desired us and worthy as we are to pray for them. And those whom we have forgotten, do thou, O Lord, remember. For thou art the helper of the helpless, the saviour of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, the healer of the sick. Thou who knowest each one's need and hast heard the prayer, grant unto each according to thy merciful loving kindness and thy eternal love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to share and to bring forward to God your thanksgiving from this day. Be it something great or be it something small. That thing that helps us to see God's hand in this day and allows us to offer some praise to God from whom all blessings flow. For a glorious day and for fine weather uh, and for just the simple blessings of life, of flowers. Uh, yeah. I have flowers popping through my back fence from the neighbor's yard, and it's like they're just saying, hello. So for those blessings, and for all the things that you have found this day, let us offer a thanksgiving to God. Most merciful Father, we humbly thank thee for all thy gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for life and health and safety, for power and women, we praise and magnify thy holy name. But above all, we thank thee for our spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Back on the bottom of page 727. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you this night and indeed forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me and to come together as a virtual community of prayer this night. I pray you have a most restful night so that in the morning at 8 a.m. we can gather with Pastor Don out of St. Mark's Anglican Church in Dawson Creek for morning prayer. 
At 12.15, the dean will be leading midday prayer at St. Andrew's Cathedral. And I'll be back, God willing, tomorrow night at 9 p.m. for Compline. Have a most blessed and restful night. Nighty night.